Eye on the Truth Part 6 A Brief Summary from the Origin of Christianity to its Present-Day Reality Is Jesus like Jonah? The name Jesus was given to Mary for her coming son. It was only after his baptism at the hands of John the Baptist that he, Jesus, claimed to be the Christ. When eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Luke 2 verse 21 Christ is not a name. It is a title. It is a translation of the Hebrew word Messiah, meaning anointed. The Greek word for anointed is Christos from which we get the word Christ. Priests and kings were anointed or Messiah when being consecrated to their office. The Bible confers this title even on a heathen king Cyrus. This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armor. To open doors before him so that gates will not be shut. Isaiah 45 verse 1 The Jews wanted a proof that he was the Christ. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. Matthew 12 verse 38 Jesus answered. A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign. But none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Matthew 12 verses 39 to 40 God commanded Jonah to go to Nineveh and warn the Ninevites. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and cry mightily unto God, yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way, and from the violence that is in their hands. Jonah 3 verse 8 But Jonah was hesitant to go as a warner unto the Ninevites, so he went to Joppa instead of Nineveh, and takes a boat to run away from the Lord's command. While he was in the boat, there was a terrible storm. According to the superstition of the sailors at that time, the storm was an indication to the existence of a person who ran away from his master's command. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. Jonah 1 verse 7 Jonah voluntary said, Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Jonah 1 verse 12 Jesus unlike Jonah Jonah voluntary offered himself to be thrown into the sea. Jesus cried while taking him to the cross. When Jonah was thrown in the sea, was Jonah alive? A fish swallowed Jonah while he was still alive. Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Jonah 2 verse 1 For three days and three nights prophet Jonah was alive till the fish throw him out to the seashore. Jesus prophesied about himself saying, As Jonah was, so shall the Son of Man be. If Jonah was alive for three days and three nights, then Jesus also had to have been alive in the tomb according to this prophecy. But in Christianity is based on the death of Jesus for humanity. Jonah alive, Jesus dead. Very unlike Jonah. Jesus said, like Jonah, not unlike Jonah. If this is true then according to his own test Jesus is not the true Messiah of the Jews. According to the Bible, the Jews were in a hurry to eliminate Jesus. Hence the midnight trial, and then sending him to Pilate in the morning, from Pilate to Herod, and then back again to Pilate. They were afraid of the general public as Jesus was their hero. Therefore, as much as they were in a hurry to hang him on the cross, they were in equal hurry to bring him down from the cross before sunset on Friday because of the Sabbath. The Sabbath starts at about 6 p.m. on Friday. According to the Bible the victim of crucifixion was an accursed of God and was not to be permitted to remain hanging on the Sabbath day. You must not leave the body hanging on the pole overnight. Be sure to bury it that same day, because anyone who is hung on a pole is under God's curse. You must not desecrate the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. Deuteronomy 21 verse 23 The body was taken from the cross and was given the Jewish burial bath. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds, John 19 verse 39. Then the body was placed into the grave before nightfall. Jesus is supposed to be in the grave on the night of Friday. Till Sunday morning when he's supposed to be out.
Jesus was unlike Jonah, who was alive in the belly of the fish, which is the exact opposite of what was claimed that happened to Jesus, who was dead for the same period of time as Jonah was alive. In addition, the time factor, three days and three nights. As according to the Bible that it was before sunrise on Sunday morning, the first day of the week, that Mary Magdalene went to the grave of Jesus and found it empty. Sunday morning subtracting three days and three nights, Jesus had to die on Wednesday not Friday to fulfill this prophecy. So, we can easily reject this prophecy and consider it as an addition to the Bible. Where is the book of Jesus? Muslims believe that God the Almighty, Allah, sent Jesus Christ to the children of Israel as a human messenger to confirm the message of Prophet Moses and to give the good tidings of the coming. Prophet Muhammad For Muslims Prophet Jesus was the expected Messiah, whom was prophesied in the Torah, the Book of Moses. Jesus came to the world from a single woman without any male intervention, which was a miracle from the Creator to the children of Israel. Jesus Christ, according to the faith of Muslims, was sent from God with a revelation delivered to him through Angel Gabriel in his own language, Aramaic. The Book of Jesus the Gospel throughout history suffered severe changes till it disappeared and was replaced with the New Testament by some of the followers of Jesus. The New Testament is multiple books that were written by some of the disciples of Jesus and some others who never met Jesus like St. Paul. Christians today don't believe that Jesus received any revelation from God and they consider the New Testament their holy book and they believe that it was inspired to some Jesus' disciples by God. Burton Mack at least some Christian communities saw Jesus as a teacher of wisdom, a man who tried to teach others how to live. For them, Jesus was not divine, but fully human. These first followers of Jesus differed from other Christians whose ritual and practice was centered on the death and the resurrection of Jesus. They did not emerge as the winners of history, perhaps because the maintaining the faith required the existence of a story that included not only the life of Jesus but also his passion. Myth of Innocence, Mark and Christian Origins Published, August 12, 2015 What is the Q source? In 1945 a chance discovery in Egypt provided surprisingly an answer to these questions. Two brothers were looking for fertilizer at the base of cliffs in the Egyptian region of Nag Hammadi, where the Nile bends on its way from Chino Basquia to Pabao. In their way, one of them, Muhammad Ali, hit a hard object concealed under the ground. It seemed to be a huge earthen jar closed with a shallow red dish. He broke it and found twelve books bound in gazelle leather. These books would prove one of the most important archaeological findings of the 20th century. And one of the reasons for their importance is the valuable evidence they provide for the existence of the sayings collection known as Q. Q is the designation for a gospel that no longer exists, but many think it must have existed at one time. In fact, even though no copy of this gospel has survived independently, some 19th-century scholars found fragments of such an early Christian composition embedded in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. By putting these two Gospels beside the Book of Mark, scholars realized that when Matthew and Luke were telling the story about Jesus, for the most part they both followed the order and often even the wording of Mark. However, into this common narrative outline, Matthew and Luke each insert extra sayings and teachings of Jesus. And although Matthew and Luke did not put these sayings in the same order, nevertheless they each repeated many of the same sayings, sometimes word for word. Since for other reasons it seems unlikely that either Matthew or Luke could have copied from one another, how can this sort of agreement be explained? The answer appears to be that Matthew and Luke each had two sources in common, the Gospel of Mark and another Gospel, which is the lost collection of sayings that are known as Q. Q stands for Kel, the German word for source. Although no actual copy of Q has ever been found, many scholars are convinced that such a document once circulated in early Christian communities. Since it was difficult to get excited about something that did not exist, Q remained a hypothesis that lingered on the edges of scholarly research. The manuscripts, known as the Nag Hammadi Library, also known as the Chinobaskian Manuscripts and the Gnostic Gospels, contained a complete manuscript of the Gospel of Thomas. A fragment of this Gospel, written in Greek, had been found earlier at Oxyrinkos in Egypt but it was only a fragment. The text found at Nag Hammadi, although complete, was written in Coptic, which was the form of the Egyptian language in use during later Roman imperial times. On the basis of this text, however, scholars were able to reconstruct the Gospel of Thomas in Greek, which was the original language of its composition. By this means, they were able to compare its contents with those of writings found in the New Testament. The Gospel of Thomas is very different from the Gospels that have become part of the New Testament. It contains no narrative material, nor is there any story of the birth, the life, or the death of Jesus. 
It consists only of sayings, 114 in all, each preceded by the phrase, and Jesus said. The collected sayings of the Gospel of Thomas are designated by its author as the secret sayings which the living Jesus spoke. Some of the sayings from the Gospel of Thomas are very much like those found in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. For New Testament scholars, one of the most interesting things about this gospel is that its author, Didymos Judas Thomas, appears to have used sayings from the same collection used by Matthew and Luke. But for this author and his community, the meaning of these sayings was clearly very different. The Gospel of Thomas, therefore, provided exciting new evidence for the existence of an earlier collection of sayings used by a variety of Christian communities. In 1989, a team of researchers led by James M. Robinson of the Institute for Antiquity and Christianity in Claremont, California, began a most unlikely task, the reconstruction of the Gospel of Q. Robinson and his team are accomplishing this by a highly detailed literary analysis of Matthew, Luke, and Thomas. Their painstaking work goes verse by verse, word by word, case ending by case ending. After nearly 10 years of work, the results of their efforts are soon to be published as the critical edition of Q. The recovery of the Q Gospel has stimulated a debate about the nature of early Christian communities and, by extension, the origins of Christianity itself. The document he was discussing is a reconstructed Greek text with an immense scholarly apparatus of Q. As biblical scholars have named a hypothetical first-century work composed mostly of sayings of Jesus. According to the history, 74 books appeared after the departure of Jesus, 70 books were excluded and considered as apocrypha by the earlier Church Fathers and four only were included in the New Testament. Most of the books were excluded spoke about the humanity of Jesus Christ, the unity of the Creator and the salvation of Jesus from the crucifixion. The answer to the question which often repeated from the Christians to Muslims about the missing gospel of Jesus, i.e. where is the book of Jesus? Is, bring us back the seventy books and we will show you the book. Jesus gave the glad tidings of the coming of Muhammad. Those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they find written in what they have of the Torah and the Gospel. Who enjoins upon them what is right and forbids them what is wrong and makes lawful for them the good things and prohibits for them the evil and relieves them of their burden and the shackles, which were upon them. So, they who have believed in him, honored him, supported him, and followed the light which was sent down with him, it is those who will be the successful. Quran 7, 157 up until the birth of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, the Israelites were awaiting a prophet and the Christ to come. When John the Baptist came, they asked him if he was Christ, and he said, I am not the Christ. They asked him if he was Elijah, and he said, I am not. Then, they asked him, Are you the prophet? He answered, No. John 1 verses 19-21 The Israelites were still awaiting the prophet prophesied in Deuteronomy. I will raise up for them a prophet like you, like Moses, from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. Deuteronomy 18 verse 18 From this verse, it is clearly understood that it refers to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Moses and Muhammad both brought new covenants to the people of the time. Jesus did not bring any new covenant, but he came to affirm and testify existing laws brought by Moses as he, Jesus, himself says. Think not that I am come to destroy the laws, or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Matthews 5 17 Moses and Muhammad both had natural birth. Both Moses and Muhammad died natural death. Both Moses and Muhammad finally attained leadership and authority over their society. The verse says from among their brothers. Ishmael and Isaac are sons of the same father, Prophet Abraham, so, they are brothers. Therefore, the children of one are brothers to the children of the other. The children of Jacob, son of Isaac, are Jews, and the children of Ishmael, who are Arabs, are their brothers. The Bible affirms that the prophecy will be to a prophet from Arabs, not from the Israelites. There has never been another prophet in Israel like Moses. Deuteronomy 34 verse 10 The verse goes on, and I will put my words into his mouth. Not even one Quranic verse is a word of Muhammad. They are words which he heard through Angel Gabriel and repeated word for word. None of them are his words. He merely repeated what was put into his mouth. Then the book will be given to the one who is illiterate, saying, Please read this. And he will say, I cannot read. Isaiah 29 verse 12 As known by everyone that Prophet Muhammad was unlettered and when he was asked by Angel Gabriel to read, he said, I cannot read. 
After the denial of the last Israelite prophet, Jesus, the time came for God's promise to make Ishmael a great nation to be fulfilled, as mentioned earlier. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you, I will surely bless him, I will make him fruitful, and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of twelve rulers, and I will make him into a great nation. Genesis 17 verse 20 Jesus confirms the shifting of the religious leadership to the Arabs. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, Israelites, and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Matthew 21 verse 43 And Jesus confirms, as well, the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad. Jesus said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, Paraclete, that he may be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. John 14 verse 16 According to Christianity, the paraclete or comforter mentioned by Jesus in this verse is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. However, Muslims believe this prophecy is about Prophet Muhammad. There has always been a controversy regarding the word paraclete in the Bible. It was argued that the parakletos in the Greek Bible was originally parakletos and it was changed during the translation from Syriac to Greek. In Greek, the word paraclete has two meanings. A comforter, advocate, helper, parakletos, pi alpharo alpha kappa lambda eta tau omicron, as believed by Christians. This is based on a pronunciation which includes the a vowel sound. Muhammad or Ahmad, the praised one parakletos, pi epsilon rho iota kappa lambda eta tau omicron, as believed by Muslims. This pronunciation is without using the a vowel sound. In addition to the fact that the second meaning has more evidence to support it, the meaning of both applies to Prophet Muhammad. Some evidences are mentioned below. 1. It has been proven that the Syriac language did not contain vowels until the 5th century. It consisted of consonants only and vowels were introduced after the 5th century through a system of dots above or below the letters to indicate the vowel sounds. To pronounce the sound a, specifically a dot was placed above and below the letter. This was transliterated as a or a, called pia with macron a with macron in Syriac language. We can conclude that the Syriac pronunciation did not include the a sound, and that the addition of an o was a translation error, to accommodate Greek language requirements or to hide the truth of the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad. Thus, this word, paraclete, points to the second meaning, i.e. Ahmad or Muhammad, the praised one. 2. The literal translation of the word comforter in the Greek language is parakalon or paragorides. These two words are both used in different positions in the Bible with different meanings. Therefore, parakletos must have a unique meaning. 3 inches addition, the s at the end of the word is usually denotes the proper name of a single masculine person, not an adjective in the Greek language. For by analyzing the Quran and Bible versus the reference to the prophecy of Muhammad can be further supported. And, mention, when Jesus, the son of Mary, said, O children of Israel. Indeed, I am the messenger of God to you confirming what came before me of the Torah and bringing good tidings of a messenger to come after me. Whose name is Ahmad. But when he came to them with clear evidences, they said, This is obvious magic. Quran 61, 6 Remember, O messenger, when Jesus son of Mary, peace be upon him, said, O Israelites, I am Allah's messenger. He has sent me to you to confirm the Torah that was revealed before me. I am nothing new among the messengers. I have come to give the good news of a messenger who will come after me, whose name is Ahmad. When Jesus brought the evidence indicating his truthfulness to them, they said, This is clear magic, and we will never follow you. As Saf, 6. Who is the Paraclete? The Paraclete is a man beloved, believe not every spirit, but prove the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. 1 John 4 verse 1. The word spirit can be applied on human beings. According to history, many earlier Christians understood that the paraclete is a man and not a spirit. Many men before Prophet Muhammad claimed that they were the expected paraclete. The king of Abyssinia, Negus, in the pre-Islamic era, was a Christian waiting for the arrival of the paraclete. The paraclete speaks what he hears. But when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he shall guide you into all the truth, for he shall not speak from himself. But what things ever he shall hear, these shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. John 16 verse 13. In fact, this is a description of a prophet, not of God. A prophet speaks what he hears from God. 
This is proof that the verses are not referring to the third person in the Trinity, as believed by Christians, but rather to prophet that shall be sent from God. And he shall declare unto you the things that are to come, as did prophet Muhammad. The victory of the Romans after they were vanquished by the Persians is an example. This was mentioned in the Quran. The Byzantines have been defeated in the lowest land. But they, after their defeat, will overcome. Within three to nine years. To God belongs the command before and after. And that day the believers will rejoice. In the victory of. He gives victory to whom he wills, and he is the exalted in might, the merciful. Quran 30, 2-5 the Persians have defeated the Romans. In the nearer lands of Levant, the Romans, after their defeat, will be victorious over them again. Within a time period, not before three years and not after ten. To Allah belongs the command, prior to the Romans' victory and after it. And on the day the Romans defeat the Persians, the believers will be happy. They will be happy because of the help of Allah being with the Romans due to them being the people of the book. Allah helps whoever he wishes against whoever he wishes, he is the Almighty who cannot be overcome, the merciful towards his believing servants. Aram 2-5 This verse talks about the defeat of the Byzantines by the Persians at the Battle of Antioch. Muslims were promised that the defeat of the Byzantines will be reversed into victory in a few years' time. The Byzantines were Christians and considered as followers of a divine religion so their victory was important to Muslims. The Persians were considered dualists as their religion was Zoroastrianism. The battle took place in the area around the Dead Sea, located in the Jordan Rift Valley, which was the closest place that the Romans occupied to the Arabian Peninsula. The fact most interesting which has been discovered recently, through satellites and the modern-day technology, is that the area around the Dead Sea has the lowest altitude on Earth. This is a true miracle of the Quran because no one could have known or foreseen such a fact in the 7th century due to the fact that satellites and modern-day technology were not available at the time. The only possible explanation is that Prophet Muhammad had truly received divine revelation from God, the creator and originator of the universe. Around seven years after the revelation of the Quranic verse, a decisive battle between the Byzantine Empire and the Persian Empire took place and the Persian's army was defeated by the Byzantines this time surprisingly. Therefore, the victory of the Romans promised by God in the Quran miraculously came true. The Paraclete convicts the world. And he, when he is come, will convict the world in respect of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. John 16 verse 8 The Quran convicted the Jews because they didn't believe in Jesus Christ as a prophet sent from God and convicted the Christians because they considered Jesus as God and adopted the concept of the Trinity as a faith, which is a sin as well, as Jesus never claimed to be God or a begotten Son of God. When Jesus referred to himself as Son of God in the Bible, he made it clear that he is not a begotten Son, but that figuratively we are all children of God. I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. John 20 verse 17 According to the Bible in Acts, the Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit descended to the disciples, he made the disciples speak many languages, but did not convict the world or preach about Jesus. If the intended meaning of this verse is that the Holy Spirit would convince the disbelievers, there would have been no need for missionaries to preach Christianity and defend it since the Holy Spirit already did this job. The Paraclete comes after the departure of Jesus. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter, Paraclete, will not come unto you. But if I go, I will send him unto you. John 16 verse 7 This cannot be a reference to the Holy Spirit, Angel Gabriel, according to Muslims, as he was already present. The Holy Spirit came to Mary, Luke 1 verse 35, and Simon, Luke 2 verse 25, as well as other incidents according to the Bible. However, Muhammad wasn't present, thus the verse makes sense as the coming of Muhammad was after Jesus went away. The Paraclete Guides to the Truth But the Comforter, Paraclete, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring to your remembrance all that I said unto you. John 14 verse 26 This applies to Prophet Muhammad as he taught his followers what to believe, what to do, and what not to do through what God revealed to him. Prophet Muhammad taught his followers the Quran. He also reminded them of the pure faith, belief in one God, and unifying him in worship, as preached by Jesus Christ. 
The paraclete glorifies Jesus. He will glorify me. Dot. John 16 verse 14. Muhammad respected and glorified Jesus Christ. One prophet Muhammad said, I am most worthy of Jesus son of Mary among of mankind in the world and in the next life. They said, all messenger of God, how that? He replied. Prophets are brothers in faith, having different mothers, their religion is one and there is no prophet between us, between Jesus Christ and me. Dot. To the name of Jesus Christ is mentioned more than the name of Prophet Muhammad in the Quran, 25 times versus 4 times. 3. The mother of Jesus Christ, Mary, has been elevated over all women according to the Quran. For the Virgin Mary is the only lady mentioned by name in the Quran. 5. The Quran has a full chapter called After the Virgin Mary. You cannot bear it now. Jesus told his disciples that they cannot bear the truth now. Prophet Muhammad brought the truth about Jesus Christ and God. He was given the Quran which is preserved from any change by God till the day of judgment, a testament to the truth forever. I bear witness that there is no true God but one God, Allah, that he has no partner or son, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his final messenger. I bear witness that Jesus Christ and Moses are his servants and his messengers.